Okay, it's day 92 of this honeydew germination experiment. As you can see, things look more or less the same. There's more leaf development. For this plant in the middle, the small leaf that got sprayed with some Lysol and got compromised, either that or by fly disease and feeding, it hasn't really regressed, but the other leaf looks very green. It's a uh, I guess as busy as it can be trying to provide carbohydrate generation for this plant to survive. I still don't see any signs of regeneration of a shoot apical meristem. So this main plant has a very healthy shoot apical meristem. It keeps pumping out leaves and twos basically. It's always a fuzzy tuft. It's very fuzzy like that so I guess insects can't feed on it. Likewise this second place vine is not doing too bad but Growth is a lot slower compared to the number one because it has so many damaged leaves and they lack in surface area compared to that plant. So the sand has dried out a little bit in the past 48 hours, but it's still kind of wet in the center. It never ceases to amaze me how wet the center of this pot always is, despite mine not having watered for a really long time. I don't even remember how many days it's been, you know, whether it's been... 10 days or whatnot, but sand has that kind of property where if it was once wet when it dries out it forms these clumps so this isn't truly dry yet but uh, you know one easy way to fix that would just be to put on some gloves and kind of <coughs> one easy way to fix that would just be to put on some kind of gloves and sort of uh, you know run it through one easy way to fix this clumping problem would be to just kind of put on some gloves one way to f one easy fix for this clumping problem of the sand is just to put on some gloves and basically uh, grind it between my fingers so it becomes like beach sand and this pot has a more pleasant appearance now rather than just being dirt and a bunch of bugs that I don't want. It's basically, you know, kind of like honeydew growing on the beach. It's day 93 and it looks like I spoke too soon yesterday. Basically there's a new shoot ape called meristem developing for this uh, plant in the middle that only has two leaves. And really only one of those leaves was very dark green and uh, providing the entire plant with food and the other leaf was compromised and shriveling away. Okay, it's day 94 of this honeydew germination experiment. So as you can see, my solar reflectors are in full effect. And they're very potent. And as you can see, the solar reflectors are providing a much longer duration of light and also more light from different angles than would otherwise reach these honeydew leaves. So I just saw a fungus gnat try to burrow in there somewhere. And we'll take a closer look if it doesn't come out soon. I think it couldn't find its way in. So this is the purpose of the sand to prevent this little bugger from uh, getting in and laying a bunch of eggs. Let me try to press its buttons a little bit. Hopefully it'll just get entombed in there. So here's a daytime look at that shoot ape cold meristem that just showed up yesterday. And it really shocked me because I thought this plant was in stasis, stagnant, and was going to die. But basically it looks like two plus true leaves um, sprouting. So pretty soon this plant will become much more robust. So here's the rest of the plant. This leaf was responsible for keeping the plant alive and that smaller leaf is a lost cause and after the shoot apical meristem died it was between those two petioles basically that stopped the auxin suppression from the shoot apical meristem downwards to all the other secondary meristems such as the one that's growing right now and has turned into a shoot apical meristem so i don't know if you remember that episode where i did the transplants uh, it was basically two pot transplants in one week 
It was devastating. One of the honeydew plants broke because I was holding onto the root ball and scooping dirt with my other hand. So that happened and you know I basically broke off the shoot system because it was only hanging by a thread and then I tried planting that somewhere in this pot to see if it would re-establish a root system and also to see if the root system would re-establish a shoot system. So neither of those happened and I think one of the reasons is because it wasn't mature enough the root system didn't have enough resources but also it didn't have one of these uh, other meristems that I'm talking about. So this is what I'm talking about. This is on the most dominant plant and between a petiole which is this little stem that attaches a leaf and you know the main stem basically there exists this uh, tuft of fuzzy matter and that's basically a suppressed meristem. Meristems basically contain undifferentiated stem cells if you will that can become anything you know leaf primordia or flower primordia. So to give an example this Somewhere in here is the shoot apical meristem of this most dominant plant. And it makes a hormone called auxin. And auxin basically suppresses the development of all these other meristems. So they stay in stasis as long as this doesn't get cut away by a human or chewed away by a herbivore or insect. So you travel down there and you know the auxin will reach here and suppress the development of that. So the shoot apical meristem is somewhere in this fuzzy mess and if I cut off the plant at here then the auxin would stop being produced and that would necessitate the development of one of these other you know, secondary meristems. Uh, there's one there, you know, there's kind of a fuzzy mass there. That could grow and that could grow for example so that's how bonsai trees work in a nutshell. If you prune away the shoot apical meristem, then the tree is a force to grow laterally. And if you prune off those apical meristems as well, then it tries to grow laterally to that. So it just becomes like a bushy little ball of a tree instead of growing like a normal tree does. And this is basically the same effect as constant herbivore grazing. Okay, it's day 95. So as you can see, growth is getting more robust. These are the leading two plants. There's a central one that's respawning its uh, shoot apical meristem, which I showed you yesterday. It's right over there. So this dominant vine has grown very long. And I'm going to keep spinning this pot around in an attempt to make everything grow in a circle. Today is the first day where I'm seeing these tendrils actually do their job. But this one is sort of self-coiling onto a petiole. This one is doing its job finally on a plastic column. This tendril from number one will probably wrap around number two. Many of these compromised leaves are dying and they sort of become very papery and thin. And basically they just crumble away. This is a good example. It's a compromised leaf that's basically ready to shatter into pieces. So this is the regeneration of the shoot apical meristem here. You can see two dead petioles, one that led to the first true leaf and one that led to a cotyledon. Or maybe these were both to a cotyledon, I'm not too sure. So development has been slow here, but keep in mind that there's only one leaf to support this entire system. So I added a lot of sand yesterday, but it contains a lot of these little rocks. So next time I'll try to use a sifter to try to get rid of all the large particles.